Hey, welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Uh, Solo Stove reached out to us a short time ago and said, hey, we've got this popular fire pit that, you know, we've sold bunches of these units and we've actually made some upgrades to it. We want you to try it out. Now, honestly, I never had the first one to begin with, but I did read a lot of good reviews on Amazon about it uh, when I was doing some research a while back. And even one of my buddies named Adam sent me some video a while back of him using one on the, the front porch of his house. He had a concrete porch. And he said, this thing's amazing. So I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna give this thing to try. Now, as I understand, the original Solo stove was pretty much what you see here. It was a stainless steel pot, if you will. And it's got some design features I'll show you in a bit. Uh, it's supposed to make it smokeless. Well, the revised version um, has two major upgrades. One is it now has this base that it sits on. And as I understand from reading the instructions, you're supposed to be able to put this under the unit and it's gonna enable you to even put this on like a wood deck and use it uh, because it'll keep the wood deck from getting too hot. So let me put this down here. And we are gonna assemble it where we're gonna be using it. Um, the other upgrade is I understand before when you had to empty the ashes out of this thing, you had to pick up the whole unit and carry it and dump it. It's pretty heavy. So what they've done is they have put an ash pan in the bottom of this thing with a screen that goes over top of that. And then there's this ring at the top to help funnel the fire. And from what I understand, when the fire goes out and this thing is completely cool, you can just reach in there, grab the ash pan and carry it out and not have to drag the whole stove around. So yeah, that's a major upgrade. So as always, I told Solo Stove, send it over and I'll give you an open and honest review. And if there's something about this I don't like, you're gonna know that. So let's get this thing together and throw some wood in it. Check out Joanne's cool shoes. So for this fire, I'm just going to take some wadded up brown paper, throw it in the bottom, and put some small scraps of kindling, uh, basically just scrap material out of my woodworking shop. Now, just a note, while this is billed as a smokeless fire pit or a minimal smoke fire pit, that's when the actual fire is going with your firewood. This kindling here, you'll see some smoke a little bit right at first. So now that the flame's up a little bit, even though it's still just the kindling, the smoke is starting to die down a bit. So I, I guess the more heat, the bigger the flame, the less smoke you're going to have. The higher the flames go, the less smoke there is. You're going to see a couple different kinds of firewood here. The actual firewood on the right is what you would buy at a convenience store. A lot of campgrounds have regulation now that you can't bring your own wood in. You have to buy it purchased and dried, and that's what this is. And then there's some scraps uh, from a woodworking shop, and I, I brought those along because I do plan on burning both kinds of wood when I go camping. So there is still some smoke, but if you see the firewood is hanging out the top, and I think the fire pit is probably made for uh, firewood that's, that's cut where it'll actually go inside of it. But I did want to try it with these longer pieces because sometimes this is what you have to buy. Now, as this burns down and falls inside, we're going to know for sure, you know, what the difference is. So just a little bit of an update. I threw some more pieces of scrap chunk wood in there from the workshop and the longer pieces are about to fall in. And I'm gonna say when they do, it's gonna go completely smokeless.
So now that the long pieces have fallen in, all the wood is contained inside the stove here, or the fire pit, let's look up to the sky and see if there's any smoke. So there is, but it's very minimal. The smoke is going straight up and you really can't smell it. Actually, I don't smell any smoke at all. Listen, I'm a person that's fascinated by fire anyway. Seeing all those ripples coming out around that, uh, around that top. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let me give another update. Uh, the fire started to die down a little bit. The wood was burning down. And I put the three last pieces of long wood I had in there. And with all of the heat that's in the bottom, there's hardly any smoke coming out the top, even with that long wood sticking out the top. So that tells me that you really need to start off with your short wood, that way your hot fire's in the bottom, and then you can put other things on top. But that being said, never leave firewood hanging outside your fire pit, especially if you're on a wood deck. So what you got there? What are you doing? Oh, you're getting down to business. <laughs> Turkey cheddar dogs. There you go. So at this point, the solo stove went together very easily. It's pretty much self-explanatory. To be honest, I didn't even read the instructions. I probably should have if I was making a video. Uh, <laughs> but I just, you know me, I'm just gonna throw the thing together. So I'm not showing you how to put one together. I'm just showing you how I put mine together and it's working really well. Now this is not all of it though. Tomorrow morning, I'm, you know, when this thing's cooled down, I'm gonna have to dump the ashes out. So I'll pick that back up tomorrow. But for right now, I think we're just gonna sit here and enjoy a nice relaxing fire. So it's the next morning. Let's look inside this thing. And here's what the ashes from the chunk wood and firewood looks like. Last night after the flames went out and the coals, you know, burned up and everything cooled back down, uh, I noticed that, you know, there was a nice dew in the air. You know, the, the Camp Easy had a, you know, it was wet filling on the outside just because of the wetness in the air. And sure enough, you know, there was dew already forming on top of the ashes. So it made them a little bit cakey, if you will. And I mean, that happens. That happens probably most camping trips. So, you know, here it is the next morning. Now I'm going to empty these ashes out with the ash pan and we'll see how easy or difficult it is. So here are the two finger holes. I probably should put gloves on, but I just want to see, you know, what it does. So I'm going to grab this finger hold here. And just... So most of the ashes now are contained in the ash pan, but not all of them, not 100% of them. Still some in the bottom. I'm gonna have to dump the thing out, I imagine, but let's get rid of these first. All right, so let's fertilize the ground here a little bit. So let's look at what we've got here. We've got the ash pan, which I think is a wonderful, wonderful feature, but it needs to be bigger. This particular one left about a three quarters of an inch gap all the way around, and you can see how much ash remains. So I'm still gonna have to take the whole pot and dump it out. The little ring at the top, I'm gonna call it a smoke ring. I don't know what you call it, but anyway, I guess it channels the, uh, the, the fire and the heat and the smoke vertically. It used to be the color of the bottom of the solo stove. Now you can see it's kind of a golden color. So these parts is as good looking as they are when you first get them, they are gonna turn colors and that's, I guess that's just what it is, but that's a little bit of a drawback to me. And the screen here, the whole reason I put it upside down to begin with is that when you grab it this way, the way they say you're supposed to use it, 
there's sharp edges on your fingers and I thought there's no way that could be right turn it over like I did you don't feel sharp edges when you try to pick it up so the need to work that out I don't think it's gonna hurt you but it certainly feels better when I had it in this way I don't think it's gonna make a whole lot of difference in performance I don't know maybe it will and check it out there's a neat little sticker in the box I'm gonna put that with the rest of my others And there it is, underneath my F.D. Roosevelt State Park Bear. So the big question, do I like the Solo stove or do I not? Short answer is yes. Uh, long answer is there are things that I like about it quite a bit and some things that I think could be better. And, you know, as far as liking it, it is low smoke. It's very low smoke. Now, it is not zero smoke. I saw some ads on Amazon where some people are actually, you know, in the description or title, you know, call it a smokeless fire pit. Well, it's really a low smoke fire pit, and there are some ads that call it low smoke. I think those are more correct. Um, last night, you know, I had on, a, had on a different shirt, and I took that off last night when I went to bed. I, I grabbed it this morning, smelled it, and it did not smell smoky hardly at all which is, you know, a little uncommon sitting around a fire. Um, you know, you've also seen in, in campgrounds in the past where you'll have three or four people around a fire and next thing you know, they're getting up moving the chairs because the smoke seems to chase them. This did not happen last night with the solo stove. I'm not saying that it wouldn't, but it didn't. Um, the smoke was low. The smoke from this one seemed to go up. Now I'm sure if, you know, if you've got some pretty good wind, that, that'll change. Now a win for me personally was that I do have allergies. I mean, you guys that watch my videos, you hear me grunt and snort every now and then. Sorry about that. Um, but when I have a campfire, usually I wake up the next morning and it's like I got a little bit of a minor head cold and it, you know, stay, you know, stuffy nose that stays with me for a few hours. I didn't have anything this morning, absolutely nothing. So I'm pretty excited about that. The, you know, the thing when you get it out of the box, it's a beautiful silver stainless steel color. It's not going to stay like that. Um, you know, that top ring is already golden. So if you want it to stay like that, you're going to be unhappy. If you're okay with it doing a color change, then it's not going to be a big deal. The, the ash collector or the ash pan, I think it was the right thing for a solo stove to do to incorporate that in there. But it needs to be a little bit bigger. Now, if it is bigger, I don't know, maybe it'd be hard to get a hold of. Maybe you need a gap around it to grab it with your fingers. I personally would have it rather have it bigger and maybe have a couple of little, I don't know, loops or something on the edges where you could grab it and pick it up. But right now, I'm not only going to have to empty the ash pan, but I'm also going to have to empty the solo stove itself, which kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but hey, I do think I'm going to use this a lot on camping trips. I think I'm going to use it on the, the back porch of the house now that I know I can use it on a wood deck. And speaking of that, you know, last night I did have some wood in there that was hanging out the side. Don't ever do that. Um, just a disclaimer, make sure all the wood is, is in the firebox, that way it's safe and nothing's gonna fall out and catch something on fire. Hey, I hope you liked today's episode. If you did, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you wanna come back. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.